Welcome back to the channel. This is Trady Storm, and you are watching second part of What If Na Betrayed Naruto Chose a Different Path. If you enjoy this video, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Now, wasting no more time, let's start the story. It's you who are stuck here with me, Naruto said, and in a flash of black and red, he was gone. Kakashi, Jiraiya, Kashina, Shikamaru, Asuma, Gai, and Sasuke were all shocked, and the rest of the group was confused but they had all gotten into a standard formation. Hey, did the dead last just pull a shadow clone on us and leave us hanging? Kiba growled while sniffing the air. Damn it, I can't smell him from here. Akamaru, do you smell that idiot? The big ninkan only whined, saying the opposite. Shikamaru said to Kiba, Kiba, that move Naruto just did was definitely not a shadow clone jutsu. He was serious and knew what he was talking about. Jiraiya-sama, Kakashi-sensei, Correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't that fourth Hokage's Hiraishin a space-time Fuinjutsu that let him instantly teleport from one place to another? Yeah, that definitely looked like Hiraishin to me, Jiraiya agreed as he and the other shinobi carefully looked at their surroundings. That definitely looked like Minato's signature flying region, but I don't think Naruto could have learned it from anywhere. The only existing scroll on Hiraishin written by Minato is in Konoha, with Menma, who still can't get the formula right, and Menma is a genius compared to Naruto. The Gaki must be messing with us, trying to even the odds with some sneaky tricks. Yeah, I agree with you, Jiraiya-sama. When I was training Naruto, he had abysmal control over his chakra, at best. Minato-sensei told me that Hiroshin requires precise control over one's chakra, as well as a clear and clean vision of where to teleport and where the marker is placed, or else one will not be able to transport himself. Naruto was never able to fully focus his attention on, but if Naruto wants to play this game, we could be nice and knock him down a few pegs along the lines. I doubt Naruto has changed much in seven years. I wouldn't be so sure. Naruto has been away from Konoha for a long time and has become known as Hanzo Hattori, one of the most skilled and powerful shinobi of this generation and era. It makes sense to think that the Naruto we knew was nothing compared to the Naruto we will face now, Shino said calmly, but he was still scared to face an S rank head on. Taking into account the reputation Naruto has built up over the years, as well as confirmed feats, kills, and combat information from different sources, I think the best thing to do would be to retreat or try to talk to him diplomatically. Shino, are you really that afraid of Naruto? Come on, he's the worst student in our class, the Kyubi cheater, and the most stupid person in our village. Trust me, I've been on the same team as him, and trust me when I say this, he has nothing on me, Kakashi-sensei, and especially Sasuke-kun. Sakura said arrogantly, not realizing the lack of logic in her statement. Hell, Sasuke-kun almost killed him if Naruto Baka hadn't cheated and pulled a Kyubi on Sasuke-kun when Naruto tried to kill Sasuke-kun in cold blood. The only reason he's still alive is probably because of damn luck and Kyubi. Otherwise, he should have died a long time ago. Kashina clenched her teeth when she heard the pink-haired Kunoichi talk badly about her firstborn son. She wished she could have scolded this shameful shinobi, but then she remembered that she was just like her until she came back to Konoha with her Menma seven years ago. No, she was worse, much worse. She had left her son with a burden that he shouldn't have had to handle alone. She also made him an easy target for the village to get rid of by putting a reward on his head and refusing to believe anyone who told her about Naruto's life in Konoha and how he behaved. Kashina had always been on the lookout for Naruto, who she thought was a Kyubi. She thought the demon fox would come back to life and give Kashina a good reason to kill the boy herself, to free her son's body and soul from its control, but it never did. Years and years have gone by, and Kashina has heard about abuse, cruelty, beatings, and close calls with death, but... Slowly, bit by bit, her old beliefs started to fall apart, and the image of a possessed child with the whiskers and eyes of a demon was being replaced by the image of a terrified, alone child crying out for his mother to come get him while he was surrounded by people ready to kill him. Kashina had been having nightmares about her son Naruto for a long time. In her dreams, her son kept getting killed over and over again. It wasn't Menma, though. It was Naruto. Eventually, the wife of the fourth Hokage realized what a terrible mistake she had made. She took her younger son with her and ran back to Konoha, determined to find Naruto and ask for his forgiveness. But by the time Kashina got back, it was too late. Naruto had already been kicked out of the village for more than a month, and everyone in Konoha has been very happy about it. When she and Menma came back, there were parties and they were treated like heroes. Menma is now known as Konoha's savior for howling half of Kyubi into himself. 
Tsunade said it was the exact opposite of what Naruto had gone through. She had not only refused to accept Kashina and Menma as part of her family, but she had also taken away Menma's inheritance as a senju, which was rightfully his. Kashina was angry when her mother-in-law wouldn't even call Menma by his father's name. But Tsunade told her that only Naruto was a true son of Minato and her grandson, and that the only reason she didn't beat Kashina into dust for what she did was because she didn't want Naruto to have to face Kashina in the afterlife and feel ashamed. At best, Kashina and Tsunade didn't get along, and at worst, Tsunade wasn't above punishing Menma for being rude and annoying to the fifth Hokage, even though Kashina didn't think there was anything wrong with how her son was acting. When Kashina heard that Naruto had died, she was almost completely broken. The thought that her firstborn was dead and would never know her was almost too much to bear. When the funerals came, the only people there were those who had known Naruto as a friend, and most of them were also here. Tsunade was also there. She cried out loud and broke down at Naruto's grave, cursing the village, the council, Hiruzen, Serutobi, and Kashina for what they had done to Naruto. Even though Kashina was crying at the grave of her son, her tears were nothing compared to those of Tsunade, Shizune, Kurenai, Hanada, Ayame, Tuchi, Aruka, and others. After Kashina and Menma came back, the council reluctantly cleared Naruto of all his crimes and punishments, even though most of the village still thought of him as a cheater, troublemaker, and demon. When this was brought up in front of Kashina, she got angry and lashed out at other people, but she knew deep down that it was all her fault. She had been sad for six years, but now she had the chance to bring her family back together, and there was no way she would miss it. Kashina shouted in the woods, Naruto. Please, I beg you, come with us back to the village. I know what I did to you was terrible, and I know how much you've suffered because I wasn't there for you. But please, Sochi, just come back with me and your friends here. I can make it all right, we can be a full family, a real family. Your brother and I want you to be a part of our family, and I will train you right along with your brother. The village will welcome you with open arms, and... Naruto's voice said, you still don't get it, do you? But Sasuke, Kakashi, and Neji couldn't find him with their Sharingans, and Neji couldn't find him with his Byakugan. You, Menma, the village, and all of us here. I don't give a damn about any of your fates. When Naruto's voice came from among them, everyone's eyes widened and they all turned to look at him. But before anyone could do anything, there was a sound of someone being stabbed and a cry of pain. The voice came from Shikamaru, who had three Senbon stabbed into his back, deep into his spine. This made him unable to move and caused him a lot of pain. Naruto stood right behind him. He was the one who put the Senbon into Shikamaru's spine to make sure he couldn't move again. Asuma was the first to notice Naruto's arrival, so he didn't wait to charge up his blades. Instead, he decided to cut Naruto up first by sending his right blade right at his neck. Naruto would have been down already if he hadn't trained himself or had a lot of war experience. But he had all of that and more, so the blunt side of his katana met with Asuma's blade before Naruto brought his katana down and back and slashed at Jonin's arm, cutting it deeply and almost breaking the bones. Asuma was in pain and almost let go of his weapon, but he had done his job, he had stopped Naruto long enough for everyone to catch up to him. And just as everyone was turning to look at Naruto, former blonde didn't waste any time and kicked Shikamaru in the back, pushing him into Choji and Lee's arms. Before three explosive tags went off right at Shikamaru and Naruto's feet, causing an explosion and smock to cover the area around them. The rest of the group was able to react quickly enough to jump away from the explosion, and Choji and Ino helped Shikamaru get away by carrying him. But even though everyone had moved away from where the explosion happened, Konoha's group now had a whole new problem. When they jumped away from the explosion, they were scattered around the area and were now in groups of twos and threes, which were much easier to attack. Most of them knew this and were already thinking about getting back together, but their luck ran out again when a thick, chakra-layered fog settled inside the barrier, making it hard to see, smell, or hear. Naruto thought to himself, water style, Megan Kirigakir no Jutsu, as his own version of Hidden Mist Jutsu took effect. He was sitting on a tree branch and watching Konoha's group split up and stick together with the people they saw closest to them at the time. Naruto thought to himself, now it's time to pick them apart, as he made his signature hand seal before he and his clones disappeared in red and black flashes. Ino told her teammate, Choji, to be careful when he sat Shikamaru down. Choji did so carefully, even though Shikamaru was shaky and had three senbon in his back. Okay, give me some space, and I'll try to figure out what Naruto did to Shika here. Ino, who, like Sakura, had taken medical ninja classes back in Konoha, 
went straight to Shikamaru to check on him, and her eyes grew wide in shock. This is awful, really awful. Choji asked Ino, his best friend, what was wrong and what Naruto had done with Shika. These Senbon. Naruto didn't just hurt Shikamaru, he stuck those Senbon right between Shikamaru's vertebrae, and he did it with the precision of a surgeon, Ino told Choji, who went pale right away. Right now, Shikamaru is paralyzed and can't move or react to anything because his nervous system just went into a shock. As long as those Senbon are in his back, he won't be able to come to his senses, but. If I try to take them out on my own, I could end up crippling Shikamaru completely. One wrong move of those Senbon and. And even if you try your hardest, you won't be able to move a muscle. Ino and Choji looked up and were shocked to see Naruto sitting right above them. While I was in Kiri, I took a couple of classes on human physiology and pressure points. Their Anbu, Irio Nins, and Hunter Nins really know what they're doing, and their acupuncture is a great way to relieve stress and loosen up when you're stiff all over. Choji yelled at Naruto, who didn't even move, Naruto, how could you do that to Shika? You could have paralyzed him for life or even killed him. Naruto didn't even move. L look, I know what Shika, me and others have said was bad, and we are all really sorry for it, buddy. But that is not the reason to be so hostile towards us. Wh why don't you just come with us back in village, A and I'll ask my mom to treat you to something really tasty, like the old good times? J just help Shikamaru here and we can all go home together. From that one, Choji and Ino heard a distinct chuckle coming from Naruto, a dark one, before he spoke up. Naruto told him, Choji, you've always been a happy fool. A good, kind fool, but a fool all the same, always going along with the crowd and letting your stomach do all the thinking before your head. Choji clenched his teeth and tightened his fist. If we were really friends, you would have at least asked me about the Kyubi and what happened in the valley instead of berating and accusing me of what I was forced to do. Hell, you and most of the others are just a bunch of idiots for believing Sasuke's lies and turning on me. You were out there too, Choji, and we all knew that Sasuke had betrayed us, but you, Kiba, Shika here, and everyone else. You can't say that Sasuke turned traitor. He was under the influence of curse mark, which made him go bad, Ino said, making Naruto turn to her. H he wasn't thinking straight when he did it, so you can't just blame him for what happened to you, Naruto. You were the one who hurt and nearly killed him while using the Kyubi and. Again, with his eyebrows raised, Naruto asked her, nearly killed, Ino? Ino, have you or anyone else taken the time to look at me when I was in the hospital? I had two stab wounds in my chest from Sasuke's Chidori, nearly all of my bones were broken or on the verge of breaking, and don't even get me started on the blood loss. And what about Sasuke? A few cuts, bruises, and a minor concussion, I think? Yeah, he didn't try to kill me, and I, who am I trying to convince? A number two fangirl and a fatso with a brain in his stomach? Anyway, enough talking. Choji yelled in anger, WHO are you calling fatso? My bones are just, but he didn't even see Naruto look into his eyes. Genjutsu. Nocturne embrace. With that, Choji's anger was gone in a second, and his body slumped and fell to the ground. His mind was now filled with his worst nightmares, and he couldn't get away from them. The Akamichi clan focuses on the physical use of their chakra. They can draw on Yang chakra easily, but only to a certain extent. This makes them best suited for Taijutsu, with less reliance on ninjutsu than others and no genjutsu at all. If you want to beat an Akamichi, use genjutsu. Gotta love Senju's warring states encyclopedia. W what the hell? Choji, are you? Naruto, you've got genjutsu too? You weren't supposed to be able to use any of that. Ino yelled at him as she moved towards Choji to wake him up, but Naruto appeared right in front of her and hit her hard in the gut. Yamanaka is the exact opposite of Akamichi. They are best at genjutsu because they can control people's minds, but they are the worst at taijutsu, Naruto said to himself as he moved his knee to Ino's chest and stroked it. He then grabbed Ino's long hair and punched her in the face five times quickly, breaking her nose in the process. Naruto finished her off with a powerful kick to the head that knocked her out and may have given her a concussion. He let go of the girl who was confused and not paying attention. When Naruto looked at the defeated members of Team Asuma, he thought to himself, result, two ribs broke, three more are damaged. Broken nose, cracked skull, and concussion. He then cast a spell to get rid of them and let the original know that they were dealt with. In another part of the yard, Naruto's katana and Asuma's chakra trench blades clashed, making a metal sound. 
Even though Naruto was wearing almost full armor, he was able to match Asuma's skill in close combat thanks to his natural speed and agility, his experience fighting different opponents, and having seen many stances. This was especially true after he gave Asuma a serious wound that stopped him from using his right hand. Now, all Naruto had to do was find the right moment to attack his opponent, while his charged up katana hit Asuma's charged up knife and pushed him back. It was smart to attack Shika first so that he couldn't use shadow possession on you. Without him, no one would have a plan to beat you. I can't believe I'm saying this, but you're good, kid. Asuma gritted his teeth as Naruto pushed him back and kicked him in the stomach, followed by a horizontal slash that Asuma dodged by moving back. Asuma yelled, shit. I should have killed you back in Kurenai's house when I had the chance. If only that snake bitch hadn't shown up. As he went on the attack again, jumping into the air and trying to kick Naruto. But by the time Asuma got to the ground, Naruto had moved away and disappeared into the mist. Because of the mist, not even a shadow, outline, or sound could be found. Asuma knew about the Kirigakure no Jutsu, which was made famous or infamous by masters of silent assassination like Zabuza Momochi, but that Jutsu didn't block hearing or sounds. Naruto's version, on the other hand, seemed to be much more advanced. Asuma thought that the water particles in the air not only blocked the sound waves but also made it impossible to see anything. Since sound travels through air, fill a mist with chakra and enough juice to stop the air from carrying the sound. No matter how much Asuma hated Naruto or didn't want to see him as an equal, he had to admit that Naruto had changed. Asuma said to Naruto, Okay, brat, I'll give you credit where it's due. You may have gotten stronger, but that doesn't change the fact that you're an idiot. He did this to provoke Naruto, knowing that he could still hear him even though there was fog in the room. Did you really think my father would have let a loose cannon like a Jinchuriki of Kyubi run free and without any restraints? No, he wouldn't, especially when our village had been attacked by that damn Kyubi and was low on manpower. It needed power, power to keep the other villages from destroying us, and because of that, my old man had to keep you nice and docile, especially since your younger brother was in capital at the time. When I tried to get the reward for your head, her snake whore showed up and almost killed me. I wanted her to be executed and Kuranai to get the same seal as you, but my old man wouldn't let me. He said it would hurt Konoha's strength, so he just talked to them and made sure you would never be adopted or that those two bitches would come near you. You really should have killed me back then, you jerk, Naruto told him as he changed his stance, bringing his sword's flat side up off the ground, bringing the hilt close to his shoulder, and putting his left hand on the blade's tip. Now, I'll make sure you don't hurt Kuranai or Anko, Asuma Serutobi. Naruto said in a dragon-like voice. He then pushed his body forward and vanished in a flash of speed. Asuma's eyes widened when he recognized that technique. A sword on the shoulder with its flat side facing the ground. This technique can't be. Asuma had rushed to get ready to defend himself, but he missed his chance as a slash came at him, leaving a wound trail that went from his right side of the torso to his left shoulder. Naruto simply said, Hirazuki, Gatotsu Ashiki, and Asuma dropped his weapon and fell to his knees, bleeding heavily, as the former blonde turned to face him. When I was participating in Mizu's civil war, I had taken lessons from Yesu's personal guards, Shinsengumi, specifically from one man known as Wolf of Nibu. Wouldn't say I fully mastered his techniques and style, but at the very least, I would say I can hold my own in a sword fight with it. Naruto stood right in front of Asuma, who looked up in his eyes, with Naruto bringing his sword up with both of his hands, seeing fear in Asuma's eyes instantly. Such fear and dread. And this is supposed to be one of the best 12 guardian shinobi? You're almost too weak to kill. Almost. Asuma's eyes widened as Naruto slashed his face, left eye, nose, and cheek. Blood started pouring down from a new wound as Asuma's body hit the ground and hit the grass. If you're dead, tell Hiruzen that we're even now. If you're not, make one move toward any of my friends or family, and I'll cut your head off. With that, Naruto's clone disappeared, letting the real Naruto know what had happened with Asuma. Shino's bugs were all over him, trying to get a sense of what was going on but failing. He was at a disadvantage because he knew that the Naruto he used to know had changed completely and completely. Shino thought about the bingo book entry for Hanzo Hattori and how his reputation as Hanzo Hattori said a lot about this. Name. Hanzo Hattori. Age. Between 20 and 27. Village. No idea. Status. Ronin, mercenary, and former, possibly current commander of the Tokugawa assassination Anbu unit. Shinobi rank. Not sure, but it could be Jonin. Rank. S rank. 
Hanzo is known as the second Kirigakure no Oni and the Cage no Shi. He is a master of silent assassinations in close quarters combat, but there isn't much known about his specific styles, techniques, and jutsu. It is known that he has three elemental natures, wind, water, and fire, but unconfirmed reports say he also has lightning and earth, as well as yin and yang releases. He is an avid user. Feats. During the Battle of Makatagahara, he killed 561 soldiers, including 150 shinobi of the Chunin and Jonin ranks. This took four hours. When I was in tailed beast mode, I killed the fourth Mizuka Jigura Karatachi. Han, a Jinchuriki from Iwagakure with five tails, was killed while in tailed beast mode. Fire Jutsu was used to destroy the temple on MT. Heen, killing one-tenth of the Oda army that was stationed there. Oda Nobunaga, the demon king of the sixth heaven who used Maiden, was killed. Fire Jutsu that no one knew about was used to destroy Tenko Castle, which had more than a thousand men inside. Bloodline faction of Kumo was killed. Kisame Hoshigaki fought and was forced to run away, this is not confirmed. Rewards. 77.000.000 Advice. Run away as soon as you see it. Shino had read and heard about Mizu's civil war and how it was worse than all of the shinobi world wars put together. Because of this, the bug user from Konoha thought it was best to leave the place, since Naruto seemed more than ready to deal with all of them. Well, Shino, what do you think? Shino turned around and looked at Naruto, who was waiting for him just seven feet away. You are probably the smartest person in this group, and you were one of the few people in Konoha who didn't make fun of me when I came back. Shino told Naruto, it would have been illogical and careless to trust the words of an unstable shinobi who turned traitor, like Sasuke, over the words of a proven trustworthy and loyal ninja, like you, Naruto. Naruto laughed when Shino said this. It was clear that your skills, abilities, and jutsu were the result not of Kyubi's influence on you, not completely, but of your own training and determination. My family and father also knew this, but other people seem to have let their feelings and lack of knowledge get the best of them. I'm sorry that they kicked you out without any reason or logic. Shino, don't feel bad. Naruto told Shino, I've had seven years to think about it, and I knew that some clans wouldn't agree with banishing me, either because they wanted to keep a Jinchuriki like me in Konoha or just because they were kind, even though I almost didn't believe it at the time. So, who, besides the Abarame clan, voted against banishing me? Clan Hyuga. Lord Hiyashi was very angry about how unfairly the village had been treating him. This surprised Naruto at first, but then he remembered that he had helped Clan Hyuga in the past. Also, he had asked the council to take you under his wing, but they said no. I remember. Naruto said, more to himself than to Shino, didn't think Lord Hiyashi would be so. Grateful to me, even though it was nothing for me to do. He then turned his full attention to Shino and asked, Shino, what's it going to be? Stop moving, and I'll let you go. If you stay and fight, I'll have to say sorry to Kurenai Oni-chan for hurting you, and you can be sure that I can and will hurt you badly. Shino said to Naruto as he gave him back his bugs, I'm leaning toward believing that, and then he stood down. But are you sure you can break through this wall, especially since you're just a copy of the real Naruto? This made the clone grin. As always, Shino, you are smart. No one will argue that the Crescent Dome Barrier isn't a good level 7 Fuenjutsu technique, but the other clones are already changing it to fit my needs. Naruto's clone told Shino, they'll be done fighting in a few minutes, so if you want, I can safely lead you out of the battle zone. Shino nodded. Shino said to the clone, then lead the way, and the clone did. By the way, there's something important you might want to hear. This mission was given by the council, not Lady Hokage, and without her permission or knowledge. In fact, I think she must have figured this out by now. Naruto's clone said to Shino with a small smile, I figured as much, but thank you for the information, Shino. In his mind, he was already thinking, that explains why Ka Chan suddenly broke our agreement. That damn council, what in the hell was Tobarama Gigi thinking when he set it up? Was he drunk, or did he just lose a bet like Hashirama Gigi? Anyway, I think Ka Chan is either destroying the council or is already here with her honor guard and Shizun. Well, she knows what we agreed to, so I can deal with them all however I want. Okay, team. Thanks to our power of youth, we've found our way to each other, and one of our young and brave allies is also here. Now, let's find the others and deal with Naruto, this old demon. Mighty Guy yelled, and Lee stood by him the whole time. 
Tenton and Kiba shook their heads, and Neji tried hard to see through the fog with his Byakugan, but all he got was a headache and sore eyes. Neji, tell us, where are all our other young friends? Neji said in a strained voice, I. I can't see anything through this damn fog. He turned off his eyes and let out a sigh of relief. This fog is so full of strong and dense chakra that it's like I'm looking at a sea of constantly moving chakra. Whatever Jutsu Naruto is using here, it not only stops me from seeing and hearing, but it also hurts my Byakugan a lot. We should feel lucky to have found each other in this fog. So wait, if neither your Byakugan nor mine nor Akamaru's senses can find the others, how the hell will we get to the others or find that Dobi? Damn it! Kiba yelled. I can't believe that the last person to learn something is me. Most likely, his fox is helping him. Yes, because everyone knows Naruto needs the Kyuubi's chakra to be strong. And that's what makes him look so old. Rock Lee agreed with this claim, which made Neji shake his head. Neji surprised everyone by saying, no, this field is made entirely of Naruto's chakra. But. To be able to make such strong mist and have such skills. He must have come a long way as a shinobi. And if his reputation is any indication, we may be up against an enemy more dangerous than Itachi Uchiha and more powerful than Lady Hokage herself. Neji wanted to say more, but he was cut off when his body fell to the ground with a senbon sticking out of his neck. Neji. H hold on, owl. Tenten wanted to rush to his side, but the next second she fell to the ground with another senbon in her neck, right where Neji's had been. This made Lee and Kiba panic. What the hell is going on? How did Neji and Tenten get killed in one shot? Kiba screamed. Those senbons. They probably have some kind of poison in them that will make your nervous system shut down when you touch them. Kiri's Anbu Black Ops, especially their assassination units and Undertaker Squad, use poisons and senbons like these most often and shamelessly. Guy told them what had happened to Neji and Tenten while carefully looking around. Naruto, being an old demon, probably picked up such low techniques while he was in Mizu. But don't worry, my fellow shinobi, because we have the power of youth on our side. Guy yelled so loudly that almost everyone could not hear her. Huh, I doubt it will be enough for you three here, someone said out of the blue, startling everyone. Then, a sound of metal piercing flesh and bones was heard, which made everyone look in that direction. When they saw what they saw, the men went pale, and Kiba almost lost his mind. Right in front of them was Akamaru, Kiba's giant ninkan and best friend among animals and humans. However, the hilt of a katana sticking out from above his head and blood coming from both the top of his head and the bottom of his laying head was something that no one was expecting to see. Naruto stood on one leg at the top of the katana hilt and casually looked down at Akamaru. Akamaru! I'll fucking kill you, you demon bastard! Kiba roared inhumanly and charged straight at Naruto without thinking. Lee and Guy, who were still horrified by the sight, couldn't stop him fast enough. Kiba would have seen that Naruto already had his second sword drawn in his left hand if he hadn't been so angry and had learned to think with his head or at least been more alert. When Kiba reached Naruto, the black armored ronin seemed to vanish into a thick mist, leaving only the top of the hilt. Before Kiba could smell or hear him, a shadow fell from above and reached the ground the next second. Hana sends her regards, Kinslayer, Naruto said to Kiba as the Inazuka's eyes widened. Just then, Blood splattered from a wound that started on the left side of his chest and ended on the right side of his hip. The Inazuka fell dead on the grass and joined his friend in purgatory. Guy was able to get back on his feet and used all of his speed to try to stop Naruto. Lee was impressed by how quickly Naruto got back on his feet and drew his blade in his left hand into a Hirazuki stance. He was already launching himself toward his next target. Severe Leaf Hurricane. He yelled while trying to kick Naruto in the face while he was in thrust. Guy hit nothing, though, as Naruto vanished in a flash of black and red, shocking Guy. The next second, just as Guy landed, his student yelled out in pain, making Guy look and freeze in place. Rock Lee stood there, shocked and in pain, with blood pouring from his mouth. Behind him stood Naruto, whose blade had hit Lee in the spine and was buried deep enough to cause Lee unimaginable pain. L. Lee. Guy was about to run to his student when Naruto said something and threw a small medical kit at his feet. Naruto told him in a cold, emotionless voice, you should think about your next move, Guy, because it will determine whether or not all three of your students die here or live. This made Guy freeze. Those senbons were filled with an extract that could kill even a healthy titan like you. 
Tenton and Neji will die in five minutes if you don't give them the antidote from the pouch I threw away before then. And Lee's life will end in an instant if you decide to fight me. So, Guy, what will it be? The lives of your students, or a chance to kill the old demon? Naruto asked Guy, who was shaking with anger and fear because he might lose his students. DD damn you, demon. Guy yelled at Naruto in tears as he grabbed the medical kit with shaky hands and went straight to Neji and Tenten, hoping to save their lives. You chose well. Now Lee will only lose his legs. Lee and Guy were both stunned by Naruto's words, as the former Leaf Shinobi sank his sword deeper into Lee's spine, before severing it, and with a scream of pain, Lee fell to the ground, unable to move his legs. Now we are even, Guy, Naruto said, and then his clone disappeared, leaving Guy in tears, shaking, and in such great fear and anger, that he. Sakura tried to say, Kakashi Sensei, this mist is like. As she looked around while standing next to Sasuke and Kakashi Hitaki. Yes, it's the same one Zabuza used on our first C rank mission, but this mist is even better, much better, Kakashi said as he moved his Sharingan around in front of him, trying to find anything in what looked like a wall of chakra that was always moving. This mist is so full of chakra that I can't see, hear, or smell anything through it. Even my Sharingan can't see through it. Whatever technique Naruto used here makes Zabuza's Kirigakure look like child's play. HN, at least the Dobi knew how to hide, like a weakling coward should, Sasuke said with a snort as he put his hand on his sword and looked around for Naruto. Come on, Dobi. What's the matter? Are you too afraid to even come face your old team? Well, if you don't come out, I'll just have to walk towards your home and see what's so interesting there that you decided to stop us in our tracks out here. Wrong move, Teme. All of them were shocked and scared when Naruto's calm voice came from behind them, just like Zabuza had done when they were on their mission in Wave. Wind style. Rankudan. After saying this, Sasuke shot out of the formation like a bullet, being carried away by a ball of compressed air. As Sakura stood still, Kakashi's instincts finally kicked in. In a split second, he pulled out a kanai and sent it backwards in his hand, fully intending to take Naruto. The famous copy ninja had one of the fastest speeds in Konoha, second only to Sasuke, Itachi, Guy, and Minato Namikaze at different points in time. He would have been able to catch Naruto as he changed stances. But Naruto had seen fast enemies and knew how to keep up with them. This was especially true since he had been able to match and even beat his father's speed before he turned 20. Kakashi was in the air when Naruto quickly blocked him with the back of his armored left hand. At the same time, his green glow fingers on his right hand quickly reached the left side of Kakashi's head. Naruto's fingers went straight into Kakashi's eye socket, and with a single pull, Naruto pulled out his most prized possession, the Sharingan of his dead friend, from Kakashi. Kakashi yelled out in pain, arg. Because an eye had just been cut out of his head. He dropped his kanai, trying to cover his bleeding eye socket. Now that his hand is free, Naruto makes a fist with his left hand and channels chakra into it, while his right hand moves out of the way. The next second, Naruto's left fist hits Kakashi on the head, cracking his skull and knocking him out because his nerves were overloaded with foreign chakra. As soon as Kakashi's body hit the ground, Naruto put it in a special storage scroll he had kept for special events and items like this one, which he now had. As he did that, Naruto's cold eyes fell on a shaking Sakura. She had pulled a kanai out of her pouch and was getting ready to fight him when Naruto's mask muffled the sound of his scoff. And Naruto, how could you do something so brutal to Kakashi's sensei? Sakura screamed in fear as Naruto slowly moved toward her. Don't come any closer, you monster. Sasuke-kun will kill you if you do anything to me, you dead last. You're just jealous of Sasuke and everyone else, so you think that attacking us will make us accept you back as an equal. Well, you're wrong, loser, because... Suddenly, Sakura heard a low, slightly throaty laugh coming from Naruto. At first, it was quiet, but steadily, it got louder and louder. Oh, Sakura, Sakura. Do you think I give a fucking damn what you and the rest of that cavalcade of quirks, double standards, and traitors think of me? Naruto asked her seriously, and Sakura stopped in her tracks. I stopped caring about most of you the day I left the village, and after seeing how warm and pompous you were to my little brother, why do you think I would even want to go back to that hellhole? To become your punching bag again, or so that Sasuke-chan would have someone to stab in the back, or chest in my case. His own genins are nowhere to be found now, aren't they? Those G-genins died on a mission, when he was stopped Sasuke-kun and me. 
Sakura tried to defend her love of life, but Naruto interrupted her. Naruto just told her, spare me all the lies and excuses that guy told you. I know everything about that tragedy because I was there. Flashback. It's been a year and seven months. Home to grass. Naruto had seen a lot of scary things in his life as a shinobi and ronin who worked for different cage, daimyo, feudal lords, and so on. Mizu's civil war had given him a lot of horrifying and nightmare-like sights and sounds that would be enough to make even the toughest shinobi people go crazy with fear and dread. But Naruto realizes now that it was all just part of his job back then, and he has learned not to let it bother him. But what he saw now was different from what he had seen before. Instead of a field where shinobi fought, Naruto saw what looked like a slaughterhouse. Six of Iwa's shinobi were lying on a grassy plain. They had been dead for about two hours. Naruto was able to figure out that they were Chunin shinobi because he had worked with Iwa and their shinobi. He also found out that they were on a diplomatic mission to the daimyo of grass. At first glance, it looked like someone was hiding and caught them all by surprise. Naruto's first choices were either Konoha or Kumo, which were also in competition with grass for the alliance. Naruto's first guess was right, because he saw two dead leaf shinobi. But when he looked closely at them, he saw something that first confused and then horrified them. The two dead shinobi from Konoha were neither Chunin nor Jonin. They were Jenins, who had just graduated from the academy and had never done anything like this before. One of them was a boy with black hair who was wearing a simple grey shirt and black pants. He was probably a regular person. The other was a girl with short lavender hair and pale eyes who was wearing a beige dress, black shorts, and sandals. She had a curse mark hidden under her headband that showed she was a member of the Hyuga branch family. They were carrying backpacks with food, clothes, and other things in them, which is a sign of a C-ranked mission out of the Land of Fire. But it wasn't the fact that they were dead that upset Naruto. It was how they were hurt. The Iwa shinobi were brutally killed. Their stab wounds, burns, and blackened skin, as well as the smell of ozone, showed that sword, fire style, and lightning style were used to kill them. Naruto's mind quickly came up with two possible candidates, Kakashi Hitaki, who was known for using both elements and swords, though he didn't use one anymore, and Sasuke Uchiha, who was now a Jonin in Konoha and was known for using swords, fire, and lightning, and being cruel to enemies. Naruto had been keeping an eye out for shinobi who could be dangerous, so he knew it was Sasuke who had done this. But what about the genins? The boy's throat was cut by a sword, and his shocked face showed that he was the first to fall. When the scared Hyuga girl tried to run away, she was stabbed in the back with what looked like a jab. This was a clear sign that Chidori was behind it. But Naruto still had no solid proof that it was who he thought it was. At least not until his trained ears didn't hear a cough. Naruto ran as fast as he could toward it and ran under the nearest tree in the field. There, he saw a young girl with light brown hair and green eyes. She was wearing a simple dark green shirt and black pants, and she was lying down with her hand over a big cut on her stomach. Naruto went to her and talked to her without giving her any warning. Don't worry, I won't hurt you, he told the pale girl to make her feel better. He then carefully moved her hand away from the wound and put his own hand on it, then started to use medical ninjutsu on her. It's going to be okay, I promise. I'm not as strong as your Hokage, but I've seen these kinds of wounds before, so you'll be fine in a few minutes. Th thank you, mister. She said in a weak voice, and Naruto replied. Naruto answered her with a calm and soothing voice, Hanzo. Hattori Hanzo. He then used his Irio ninjutsu to heal her organs and start the regeneration of her tissues. Whoever did this clearly wanted to kill you, and he almost did. You must be very determined and strong to have survived. What's your name, girl? M. Makoto. My name is Makoto Serutobi, Makoto said, and Naruto looked at her carefully. I I'm from Konoha. My team, are they? I'm sorry, Miko-chan, but they're gone. Naruto could see that the girl was so weak from losing so much blood that she couldn't even cry. Miko-chan, I know this is hard for you, but... I've looked at the battlefield and I know it wasn't the Iwa Shinobi who killed your friends. Can you tell me who did it, and where is your Jonin sensei The Irio ninjutsu was working on the girl, and she was getting better and better as the wound started to heal and her color came back. It was S. Sasuke sensei, R. J. Jonin sensei, Miko said through tears. When Naruto heard that name, he tried not to growl. We were on our way to Hidden Grass Village to deliver a message from the Hokage when we came across these shinobi of Iwa. 
They said they had no problem with us and let us pass by without a problem, but then Sasuke sensei just. He just killed them all. It was so fast and brutal I. Makoto winced a little from the pain. Don't worry, Miko chan. Your organs are just starting to work right again. All you need is a lot of rest and a blood transfusion, and you'll be fine, Naruto told her when he was finally done healing her. I know this is hard for you, so let me guess. After he was done with Iwashinobi, he turned against you, didn't he? Miko just gave him a weak nod. Why yes. First he killed Yoshikiri, then Nana when she tried to run, and then he caught up to me and. I, I don't understand why he would do something like that. We were a team for a year, he trained, cared for, and helped us all, and then. He only said it was so he could get the full power of his Sharingan. Sasuke. I always knew you'd turn out to be a worse scumbag than Itachi, but this. You're not just scum, you're a cancerous tumor, a leech that feeds on others and cares only about yourself. And now, you've done this just to get that Mangekyu Sharingan of yours. Naruto's blue eyes turned into Kayubi's for a second. I swear on the blood of those poor kids there that the next time we meet, you will pay for betraying them. Forget Itachi, forget Orochimaru, and everyone else, you better be ready for me, because now I will send you to your grave with the rest of your clan. Flashback end. And believe me, I'll make that jerk pay for what he did to them. I'm used to people trying to kill me, but to betray your own students like that. That makes me really mad. Naruto glared at Sasuke's fangirl, who was shaking in fear because Naruto was putting out so much ki at this point. But first, I think I'll repay you for all the bad things you've done to me, Sakura-chan. Sakura didn't see it, but she could have sworn Naruto just smiled at her with a cruel smile that even Anko Mitarashi would be proud of as he made his way toward her in a menacing way. Just when Naruto was about to grab Sakura by the throat, he heard the clear sound of birds. There are many, many birds that chirp. It sounded like a thousand of them were chirping at the same time. The air smelled like ozone, and the sound was getting closer and closer. Naruto saw the signs and didn't waste much time before pulling out one of the most important and basic jutsu in the history of shinobi. Naruto used Kawarimi no jutsu, and in the blink of an eye, Sakura was standing where he had been. Her right shoulder was now pierced by an arm that led Chidori to Naruto, who was standing behind Sakura with a hateful look in his eyes. Sasuke took his hand off Sakura's shoulder and pushed her away from him without saying a word. He didn't care in the least that he had just nearly killed her and that she was now bleeding heavily. His attention was now on the blonde ronin who used to be a ninja but had turned into a dark-haired ronin and had already put his left hand on his sheathed sword. Free advice, Teme. If you want to kill someone, make sure they can't hear you. I don't know why this Chidori is called an assassination technique, Naruto said as Sasuke scowled and Uzumaki looked at the traitor mark on the right side of his face. I have to say, Sasuke, that this little mark looks good on you. It's a good mark for the filth of caliber, but it could use a second one. You call me, a Uchiha, filth? Sasuke asked in an arrogant tone as he took his sword out. Weren't you the one who just now replaced me with this pink, worthless whore? What makes you so much better than me? Naruto said calmly, well, I wouldn't call Sakura here completely worthless, at least now that she proved to be useful for something. As for filth, considering my banishment, animosities, biases, etc. I believe I am more than justified in my actions, especially since you just invaded my private land and threatened me, so I have every right to use self-defense. As for why I'm better than you, Teme. I've done a lot of bad things, Sasuke. Some of them make the little cleaning up of your clan look tame and innocent. Naruto saw a hateful look coming from Sasuke's eyes. But everything I did was part of my job, and I did it to end fights, save lives, stop wars, or stop a disaster from happening. And I never turned on my teammates or, more importantly, the kids I was responsible for, unlike a certain Uchiha filth that stands before me. All Naruto saw was a smirk on Sasuke's face, not even a hint of regret or sorrow, just pride and arrogance. So, that little B asterisk TCH Makoto lived. I knew I should have burned her with my new power just to test it, but I guess I was too emotional. Sasuke closed his eyes, then opened them to show Naruto his new eyes, which were shaped like atoms. It doesn't matter. Whoever is in your house will taste my new power once I'm done with you. Naruto just told Sasuke, you won't get to her, I've made sure of that, believe me. You won't hurt anyone in my house or anyone else, either, because I'm doing what Itachi couldn't do. Naruto jumped up and ran full speed toward Sasuke to cut him down. 
don't even dare to say his name, Dobi. Amaterasu. Sasuke's left eye bled as he sent Naruto the flames of Amaterasu, his strongest jutsu. Sasuke was getting ready to celebrate his victory when he saw a flash of black and red right before his flames came out and started to burn the empty ground, making steam as they hit the mist. The Uchiha Avenger started looking around frantically to see where Naruto was until he heard his voice from behind him. So, this is the famous Amaterasu of the Uchiha clan? I have to say, it's not as impressive as I thought it would be. Sasuke turned around and saw Naruto just standing there with the same expression on his face. A fusion of Yinten and Katen, creating a pseudo Keke Toda called Enten, or Inferno style. While creating Enten itself is nothing short of a miracle and genius of the highest praise, finding out that Amaterasu just makes those flames appear like that is. Kind of lame, Naruto said as Sasuke sent his next blast of Amaterasu at him, only for Naruto to disappear at the last second. Stop messing around and stand still, Dobi. You think your little advanced Shunshin will always save your neck? Sasuke called him out, looking around. You think I'm using Shunshin here? Sasuke, Sasuke, you really disappoint me, Naruto said in a mocking tone, keeping his distance. For a so-called genius from the Uchiha clan, and Kakashi Hitaki's favorite student, I would expect you to know the technique that my ancestor Tobarama Senju used to kill Izuna Uchiha. Naruto laughed as Sasuke said, so, you really use Hiraishin no Jutsu? And did I hear you right? You just said the second Hokage is your ancestor? What on earth is so funny, you worthless Dobi? Oh, Sasuke, I'm just laughing at how ignorant and haughty people can be. It's common knowledge in Konoha that Minato Namikaze is the son of Tsunade Senju, the granddaughter of Hashirama Senju, and the grandniece of Tobarama Senju. I'm sure that everyone and their dog in the elemental nations also knows that Menma Namikaze is his son and that I, Naruto Uzumaki, so you can see that I am not only the great-great-grandson of the second Hokage, but also a direct descendant of the first Hokage. It's almost funny that a Senju is facing off against a Uchiha, just like during the Sengoku Jidai. Naruto was teased by Sasuke, who said, your weak clan never had a chance against the real power of the Uchiha. The only reason we joined forces with you was out of pity. It's clear that Izuna Uchiha was a wimp to lose so easily to a Senju. Then Madara Uchiha was even more of a weakling because my grandfather beat him, even though he had the power of Kayubi and the real Mangeku Sharingan on his side, Naruto said to Sasuke, who growled as Naruto appeared right behind him. Now, Sasuke, let me show you why Clan Senju was always the one to put your clan in its place. Sasuke was already turning, but even with his new and better eyes, he couldn't see Naruto's hand seals all at once. Enten. Kuroi Goen no Jutsu. With that, Naruto opened his mouth and shot a stream of pure black fire at Sasuke that was stronger than the Amaterasu flames that Sasuke had used before. Sasuke was almost caught off guard, but he just barely managed to use his strongest defense and technique. A giant skeleton made of purple chakra started to form a torso around Sasuke. Skin grew on top of the bones, and a layer of purple chakra wrapped around Sasuke, who had thought that whatever trick Naruto had played on him would be easily swept away by Suzano, the ultimate weapon of the Uchiha clan. But this time, Sasuke's luck ran out. Naruto's Enten hit the ethereal being with full force and began to push it back and melt its skin and even bones. This shocked Sasuke, whose eyes were bleeding and all of his muscles and bones were close to breaking from the pressure of keeping the Suzano active. Still, Naruto's Enten was showing how strong and powerful it was. It was an example of Naruto's most ambitious and probably one of his greatest accomplishments, making Tobarama Senju Enten a reality. Naruto and a lot of other people were right when they said that Tobarama Senju was a genius at manipulating elements and making jutsu of all levels. Many people only remember him as a user of Sweden, but he was really a master of all five elements. He was on the same level as Hiruzen Serutobi, if not higher, and only Hashirama Senju and Madara Uchiha were better than him. He had made a lot of powerful and scary jutsu, like Hiraishin, Edo Tensai, Shadow Clones, and many more. His most ambitious project, however, was never finished. It ended up in the Great Library of Uzumaki and in the hands of Naruto, who decided to finish it. Enten was made after Naruto spent four years, made more than 2,000 Shadow Clones, got five tails worth of chakra from Kurama, and tried and failed many times. The hardest part of making Enten was finding the right way to blend Yinten, or Yin release, with Katen, or Fire release, in a way that was balanced and focused. And just being able to use yin and yang releases consistently is seen as a feat on par with that of a cage. 
Naruto was only able to do this after two years of training with Kurama and unlocking his dormant Senju genetics, which were one of the greatest bloodline gifts in the world and one of the main reasons why the Senju clan was feared as the strongest before Hashirama Senju was born. Even though most shinobi can use up to two, and usually four, chakra natures later in life, there's always the fact that one or two are primary and more powerful than the others. Members of the Senju clan were born with the ability to use each of the five elements as their primary one. They could also practice all five of them, mastering each one and making jutsu for each one. And Naruto had the same bloodline as Tsunade, his father, Tobarama, and Hashirama. And because Naruto was a Senju, he could use Yang style without even thinking about it. This made it much easier for him to learn. Even though Yin style was so different from him, he wouldn't be Naruto Uzumaki Senju if he hadn't also learned it. After that, it was a trial of trying, failing, figuring out, and being exact. The result was that Naruto got one of the most destructive natures in the world, which water style, even when combined with wind, couldn't stop. Han and his rebels were killed by this natural force in Tenko Castle when they tried to take over Iwa no Kuni. Even though Naruto might have had the most chakra in the world, if you don't count Biju, Enten was a very expensive nature to use. Even though this isn't his most powerful Enten technique, just the jutsu he's using on Sasuke now has taken away 10% of his full power. Why did Naruto choose this place to use it? Before he sent Sasuke Uchiha's soul to hell, he wanted to teach him a lesson. Sasuke's Suzano wasn't ready for a flame that was stronger than his own Amaterasu, so it was quickly destroyed. Soon, Suzano started to fade away, and the last wave of black flame caught up to Sasuke, blasting him and going through the mist. Naruto told the flames to go away, since he didn't need them to burn for seven days and nights, but to burn everything away. Naruto walked up to Sasuke's burned body and saw that his Enten had burned Sasuke's right arm up to the elbow. Most of Sasuke's right side now had third degree burns, and the right side of his face had been burned so badly that his eye was destroyed, his hair was gone, and ugly scar tissue was starting to form. Even then, Sasuke was still alive, but barely, even though he had some of the worst burns a man could get. Naruto thought to himself, I guess I didn't realize how strong Suzano's armor was. Now I understand why even Tobarama was afraid of this technique, as he mocked Sasuke with a smile. Well, look on the bright side, Sasuke. With a face like that, no girl will want to be within a hundred meters of you, except maybe Sakura, Naruto said darkly as he pulled his sword out of its sheath and brought it up for the final blow. But you won't live long enough to enjoy being free of fangirls. Goodbye, Sasuke. With that, Naruto scowled as he brought the sword down on Sasuke Uchiha who was kneeling and badly burned and hurt. Sage Arts, Udama Rasengan. Naruto's eyes widened as he looked up and saw a big spiraling ball of chakra coming down on him. It was sent by Jiraiya, who had two small toads on his shoulders but now had a beard and looked even more like a toad than before. This time, Naruto was hurt by Rasengan's attack, and he growled in pain as the spinning sphere hit him much harder than he had expected. Naruto had been hit by the spinning sphere for three seconds, trying to break him down, until he was able to look past the pain and shock and flash away from it. As soon as Jiraiya hit the ground, Naruto saw a flashback of the mist being sucked into a special seal by Kashina Uzumaki, who was standing next to Jiraiya with her sword ready. Naruto let out a frustrated sigh that was almost a growl as he spat out some blood and threw away the broken shiitake that was covering his armor. This showed his armored torso, which had dented and broken back plates but was still holding up. He thought to himself as he watched his godfather and mother stand guard over Sasuke, Sakura, and Kakashi. So Jiraiya Teme has decided to use Sage Mode on me, even though it doesn't look finished. If it weren't for my armor, I would be dead. Naruto looked at his mother and saw that her hands were slightly shaking. Her body language says she's ready to attack, but her mind isn't ready for battle yet. Does that woman really think she can bring me back as her son? Well, it looks like I need to get serious about this. Jiraiya yelled at him, that's bloody enough, you idiot. Can't you see that we are trying to help you? And this is how you greet us? By attacking and killing your own friends? Your father must be turning in his grave at how you treat your village. At this point, Naruto's emotions and years of anger and rage came out, triggered by the seeming ignorance of these people. My village? Jiraiya, that damned place was hell for me. People tried to kill me, used me, and took everything I had. Naruto yelled at him and everyone else, clearly angry. Father, sisters, friends, childhood, and even my own memories were taken away by you, that fucking jerk of a Hokage, and this B asterisk TCH who dares to call me her son. 
I put everything on the line for that hellhole, and how did it repay me? By fucking banning me for doing my duty. Sochi, please, I beg you to stop. I know Konoha and its people hurt you, but you need to put it behind you and come back with me, your mother. Your family and friends, they all want you to come back and forgive it all. I want you to come back, Sochi, so please. Kashina had tried to convince Naruto, but it didn't work. Naruto shouted back at his biological mother, you? Who the hell do you think you were to ask me anything? You abandoned me the day I was born because I had whiskers and you saw not my eyes but the eyes of Kyubi when it was sealed in me, unlike your precious little Menma. Don't forget about the bounty you put on me. If you were really my mother, you wouldn't see me as anything but your son, but you're not. And my family and home are right here, where I stand to protect them from you. Naruto put his house right behind him and let his two katanas fall to the ground so he could summon his true weapon. Jiraiya yelled, your family and home are the people of Konoha, not some dumb girl you hooked up with and pretended to marry. Naruto's key grew stronger. We've always done what was best for Konoha, just like your grandfathers and fathers would have done. Your duty, no, your destiny is to be the shinobi of Konoha and live there, to uphold the legacy your families have left for us. And we will make you uphold them, whether you like it or not, and nothing will stop us. Now, stop being such a brat and come quietly, and maybe we'll put in a good word for Tsunade after. Yes, Naruto boy, come back to Konoha and let go of your anger about it. It's time you looked past it and accepted your fate as one of the children of prophecies, the green small toad said directly to Naruto while sitting on Jiraiya's shoulder. You and your brother are meant to make a difference in this world, so. Naruto yelled at them, accept my fate, my destiny, and my duty. As his chakra began to show up all over his body, without any of Kyubi's power. Prophecies, fates, destinies and all this croppa they are for blind fools that are unable to see past their own nose and arrogant beliefs. And that village, my father, my grandfather and granduncle would rather kill themselves than see what it became. A cesspool of corruption, power-hungry civilians, eyeing up for only money, influence and led by their greed, with shinobi council backquote's warmongering ways, building up more and more power, thinking that it would keep the peace through enforcement, when in reality it will only unite those that fear and hate Konoha for its misdeeds. And on top it all off, hypocrisy, treachery, betrayal and sacrifice of its shinobi so that this atrocity known as Konoha could stand strong. That is not the will of fire that you preach. This is the will of darkness, where few sacrifice many for their own personal needs, like Danzo, Hiruzen, and that damned council, just to keep up the appearances. And you want me to go back there, to bring my family in there, the place that had taken away all I had and cared for? Think again. Zanjetsu. With this shout, a long, sheathed katana with a black handle and no suba appeared in Naruto's right arm. He quickly took it out of its sheath to reveal a blade as dark as night. Kashina was shocked when she saw that sword, but she knew it right away as Naruto swung it around to get ready for the fight. Kashina yelled at Naruto, S. Sochi, how? Where did you get that sword? Do you know what sword that is? It's. Naruto answered her. Zanjetsu is a relic of the Uzumaki clan and the sword of one of its founders, Masamune Senju. It has been passed down through the generations as a sign of a true master of the Uzumaki clan, and my grandfather, Shingen Uzumaki, the Tiger of Uzu, was the last person to use it. Kashina flinched when she heard her father's name. You may say that Menma is the leader of the Uzumaki clan in Konoha, but the real leader of the Uzumaki clan is Uzumaki Kashina, and you know it. With this sword, I will uphold Uzumaki and Senju's most sacred rule, stand by your family and protect it with your life, and it will stand by you and protect you in return. As Jiraiya took his place, he told Naruto, if you don't move back, I'll use all my strength to knock you down and beat you until you come to your senses. I knew that Serutobi sensei shouldn't have given you so much freedom. You were always the weaker twin, and Kayubi was able to use that to his advantage. Sochi, it must be Kayubi blinding you. Don't listen to its words. It had corrupted and blinded Mito Bachan with its words, all so it could take control of its Jinchuriki by pretending to be a friend to its host. But neither Menma nor I fell for it, and I know you can be free of it too, just come with us. Enough talking, you two. This time, I'll be serious, so get ready, because this is my full power. The white aura around his body started to get stronger, and it looked like his hair was starting to turn silver or white. Senju hidden jutsu, Migata Noah. Just as Naruto was about to use all of his power, a huge wall made of pink crystals appeared in front of him, Kashina, and Jiraiya, blocking the way for both sides to fight. 
Naruto knew what this meant and stopped channeling his chakra. He and Jiraiya and Kashina all turned to the right and saw nine people walking toward them as the wall of crystals between them broke apart. In front of the group walked Tsunade Senju, the fifth Hokage and a very angered woman at the moment, followed by her student Shizune, holding Tonton in her hands, while flanked from left and right by Kurenai, Hanada, Shino, Anko Mitarashi and Azuki Yugo, whom Naruto knew from times in Konoha, while the two that stood right at Tsunade's sides were also known and close to him, but he meet them during his time as Ronin. The first one was a beautiful young woman in a green kimono with a white flower on the left side. She had black eyes and dark brown hair that was tied up like Anko's tail, but with two bangs on the sides of her head. She used to be Orochimaru's deadliest assassin and one of his most trusted lieutenants. She hadn't met Naruto Uzumaki until five years ago, when he was in Mizu. There, he opened her eyes to Orochimaru and saved her from him in a way. After staying with him and helping him end the bloody civil war, she and another one of Orochimaru's pets, went to Konoha to start a new life as Tsunade's personal guard and advisor against Orochimaru. Her name is Gurren, and she is the last person who has the crystal release, which is almost extinct. On Tsunade's left stood a young girl in a dark red sleeveless dress, reaching back to her tailbone to show off her impressive figure. Her flat stomach was open, and she wore black shorts and sandals. On her back was a swirl symbol. She had bright red long hair with a few spikes and red eyes without pupils. She wore glasses. She was a pureblood and a survivor from Naruto's mother's clan, the Uzumaki. Naruto found her by chance, or maybe even by fate, since she was one of the only people left from the clan. After Orochimaru saved her from him and showed her how to get strong on her own, she moved to Konoha and became Tsunade Senju's apprentice. She also became the strongest sensor in Leaf and one of the best sealing experts in Hai no Kuni on her own. Karen Uzumaki is Naruto Uzumaki's distant cousin and one of his closest and most loyal friends, along with Gurren. She is also one of the few Uzumakis that Naruto can call his family. Naruto couldn't help but smile when he saw the whole group. He sealed his sword and put his katanas away, while Jiraiya and Kashina turned pale when they saw Tsunade, her honor guard, Kurenai, Hanada, and Shino. Tsunade quickly figured out what was going on and what the shinobi from Konoha were doing here. He was angry at what must have happened here. She called on Katsuyu right away and spoke up. Katsuyu, split up and start treating everyone who is hurt here. Karen, Shizun, and Hanada, heal everyone who isn't dead, Tsunade said without hesitating. Right away, Lady Tsunade, said Katsuyu. The Kunoichi went to do their jobs, and the fifth Hokage turned to face the only two people in this group who were still standing. Tsunade, look, we can explain everything. And look, there's Naruto. Alive and kicking, and hurting all of us here by being. Jiraiya had already turned off his sage mode, and the two frogs were on their way back to their home, when Tsunade hit him in the stomach with such force that it almost broke his stomach. Jiraiya, do you think I'm an idiot? Not only did you, Kashina, Kakashi, and everyone else go behind my back with this unauthorized mission, but you even dared to go against the direct orders of your Hokage to not fight Hanzo Hattori at all costs. Tsunade picked Jiraiya up with one hand and threw him to the ground, then stomped on his balls, nearly breaking them. And don't try to tell me what happened here. Shino, Kurenai, and Hanada already told me that you were almost ready to force Naruto back into the village without my knowledge or orders. He was well within his rights to defend himself and his family here, so as far as I can tell, this was an unauthorized mission with you, Kashina, and other senior Jonin, and everyone else here paid for it. Karen, what's the status? Lady Tsunade, most of them are alive. Choji was in Genjutsu while Shikamaru was placed into a paralysis through acupuncture, but I removed the Senbon from him accurately, so he backquote LL make a full recovery soon. Ino has a cracked skull, several ribs broken in a concussion, but nothing beyond Katsuyu and our abilities. Asuma Serutobi is seriously injured in torso and head, but Hanada and Shizune are working on him, so he will probably live. Tenten and Neji were put to sleep through a sleeping poison, which was laced upon Senbons, as for Leah his spine has been severed, with a blade and surgical precision, so he won back quote t be able to walk, even with our assistance. Sasuke Uchiha has third degrees burns, loss of arm below elbow, right eye and needs serious attention right now. Sakura has a stabbing wound in her shoulder from what appears to be Chidori, with Katsuyu and me on it, while Kakashi is missing a Sharingan and had his nervous system shut down. The only Kias are Kiba Inazuka and his Ninkan Akamaru. 
Karen quickly informed Tsunade of what she had gathered from Katsuyu and her own shadow clones that worked here already, while Anko, Kurenai and Yugo stood shocked at hearing it. Holy f asterisk asterisk ing kami. Gaki didn't mess around, but to beat all of them by himself. Naruto, how strong did my little brother get without his sister? Anko thought to herself as she looked at a new side of her surrogate brother. Anko said to herself, with a healthy blush on her face, damn, he was cute when he was little and blonde, but now. I'll miss the whiskers, but the black suits him damn well. Hell, he's grown into one hot damn walking lady killing machine right there. Kurenai looked at her former adopted son and said, Naruto, my little boy. If only I hadn't trusted Asuma and his father. I know I should be angry at Kiba, but I knew what crimes he committed, and I'm sure you had to do what you did, especially since you defended your home here. I hope we get to talk, if you really do remember me and Anko. You've changed so much, and I wish I could have done more for you. Yugo thought to himself as he looked at Naruto, it's hard to believe that the blonde, helpless boy I took care of for so long has turned into such a strong, fine man. Even though you fought with some of my fellow shinobi, I know you were within your rights to defend yourself and your home here. No sign of fatness or scars from the past. You must have tried to forget what Konoha did to you, but here it is again. I hope you can forgive those who deserve it, Naruto-kun. Asuma, Sakura, and Sasuke are close to dying, Lee is crippled for good this time, and Kiba Inazuka is dead. When I get back to Konoha, that damn council better have their graves dug out, because this is the last time I'll let them send Konoha's children to die like that. Tsunade yelled, glancing at Naruto. Naruto, as Hokage, I should be angry, but seeing what village has become makes me sad. Still, when it comes to protecting Yusaka, Masamune, and your wives, you don't exactly hold back, so I'm surprised we have so few casualties. You must have known I was coming here. Tsunade, can't you see? My Sochi is right there, and he won't. Kashina tried to argue, but her mother-in-law gave her a death glare. Kashina, one word from that mouth of yours, and there will be one more KIA here. I've had it with your demands, Menma's arrogance, and how you dishonor my son, may he rest in peace. Get out of my sight, both of you. I'll deal with you later. Tsunade told them both as she moved closer to Naruto, her face relaxing a bit. Did you expect me to show up? That's right, which is why I used my shadow clones to erase the barrier, Naruto said, letting go of his anger. Well, the cat is out of the bag now, Ka-chan. All it took was for shy and kind Hanada to blurt it out after seeing my chakra. Just my luck. Hey, try having my luck for a while and then tell me how it feels, Tsunade said. This made Naruto and Tsunade laugh. How are Yusaka-chan and Masamune-kun? Are they healthy, nothing wrong with them, do they have enough healthy food, and? Matabi and Naruto like to call this Tsunade's Ba-chan mode. Yes, they are fine and healthy. Kura-chan makes sure they eat only the healthiest and freshest foods and vegetables. She takes it more seriously than I do loving ramen. Naruto saw Tsunade smile. They're sleeping now, but would you like to stay the night? They'd be happy to see you, and Yusaka has been missing her Ba-chan. We don't have enough room for everyone out here, but you, Kurenai, Anko, Karen, and Gurin should be able to fit. Others, though, will have to sleep in the tent. Naruto said, don't worry, they'll figure it out. And sure, I'll stay the night. Tsunade agreed. Actually, Naruto-kun, there's something I'd like to talk to you and your wives about. I remember the deal and promise I made to you all those years ago, but... There's no way to sugarcoat something like that. Naruto asked her, so, I take it you have some kind of mission for me, Ka-chan? Yeah, and it's not just any mission, Sochi, Tsunade said after a pause. I need you to come back to Konoha with me so we can save it. So that's it for today, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more awesome stories like this. Thank you, see you all in my next video.